Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I decided to switch things up a bit and went back and played some Battlefield 3. This game is so much fun, but before I go in and explain why I had such a good time going back and playing, I wanted to give you guys a quick update as to what is going on with the Naval Strike DLC for Battlefield 4 for PC users. Uh, DICE just released an article saying that at least for PC, the Naval Strike DLC has some serious issues. We don't know what these issues are at this point, but DICE decided that they were so large or they were significant enough that they need to go in and delay the release date for the expansion pack. We currently do not know how long this delay is going to be. For console users, they should release at the at their normal designated times. It shouldn't change anything for consoles, but at least for PC, it could be a couple of hours, it could be a couple of days. We really don't know at this point. And so the one part of me is a little upset. I was very excited for this upcoming expansion pack. I was very excited to go in and play on all the new maps, play on the new game mode. Carrier Assault looks like it's going to be an app absolute blast. I cannot wait to get my hands on that new game mode and just play on all of the glorious new maps. But the other side of me is like, fantastic. Thank you, DICE. Thank you for not releasing an unfinished product. I realize that this is like very last minute. Like it is very last minute. It's only a couple hours before the scheduled release date. But the fact that they are admitting that it's not ready for launch and that they're going to be taking the time to work around the clock, or at least I'm, I'm assuming they're working around the clock, to resolve the issue is a huge step in the right direction. Uh, a lot of people probably would have liked it if DICE had the same mentality when the game launched all the way back in October. Like when, it, when, when Battlefield before it launched, it was not a finished product. It was buggy, it was simply not polished, and it would have been nice if DICE had the same mentality and been like, hey, the game is simply not ready for release, we're gonna work on it for a couple more months, and while I know this may upset a couple of you guys, probably a lot of the investors mainly, uh, we wanna deliver the best Battlefield experience that we can give you guys, and so we're gonna take the time to make sure that it is a polished product. And so, at least for me, I think that this is great news. As long as it doesn't take them weeks upon weeks to resolve this issue, I don't think that that's gonna be the case. I'm assuming it's only going to take a couple hours or a couple of days. As long as that's the case, I think this is a great step in the right direction. Uh, but with all of that out of the way, I am having so much fun with Battlefield 3. I played for a couple hours last night, and during those couple hours, I had a huge grin on my face. I played on all my favorite maps. I had all the nostalgia feels. I played with all of the quote-unquote overpowered weapons. And I just, I just had an absolute blast, like I was having so much fun. And I think the main contributing factor to this, and no other people have mentioned it, is that the netcode or the responsiveness of it, it just feels so much tighter. Like if you get into a firefight with someone, it actually feels like there's a lot more skill involved. Like if your accuracy is a lot better than the enemy and you started the engagement before them, you're gonna win that engagement. Or if I died to someone, I was like, you know, hats off to you. You outperformed me, you outplayed me, you deserve to win and you deserve to get that 100 points from my from my carcass. And that was happening throughout my play session. Like there were some moments, and this doesn't happen very often in Battlefield 4, which is very disappointing, where I, I round a corner, I take, you know, the four bullets to take out one target, and then I quickly just immediately switch to the next engagement or the next guy that's right next to him. And because the net coat or whatever you want to call it in Battlefield 3 is just so much tighter than Battlefield 4, I have the peace of mind that that first guy is going to die and then when I switch on over to the next one, I know and I have the confidence that I'm going to be able to take him out as well. And that was happening throughout my play session and easily that is the most enjoyable aspect of this game. Uh, and what's funny about this statement is that back when Battlefield 3 first launched, this was actually one of the largest complaints of the community. Like, there were a lot of people that were not happy a dying around corner. I was one of those players. I was always upset when I died to these quote-unquote netcode issues. And it was a problem back in Battlefield 3, and it probably still is a problem right now. But because it doesn't happen as frequently in Battlefield 3, or it's just not as apparent, the, the night and day difference between the game is quite staggering. And honestly, if they were able to somehow get the same type of netcode or connectivity, whatever you want to call it, and get Battlefield 4 on par with what it was back in Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 would easily be one of my favorite Battlefield titles of all time. Like, I really like what DICE has done with Battlefield 4. I love all the new vehicles, I love the maps, I love all the new gadgets. Like, they've really done a lot to progress the game, but at the same time, they definitely have taken a step back on at least the netcode issues. Uh, that being said though, there are some pretty large glaring issues with this game and probably the biggest thing is that everyone I came across was basically either using the M416 or the M16A3 or playing as the Assault class. The Assault class in this game was, I don't want to say it was overpowered, but it was simply amazing. Like using the med packs that gave you health and also getting people up to 100% health instantaneously 
was pretty powerful, alongside the fact that you had weapons like the M16A3 and the M416 that dominated people pretty much in every single type of combat scenario. Like, I was running around with the M416 taking people out out close, I was laser beam like accuracy at long range, sniping snipers that should have had an advantage over me, but didn't because I was using this particular weapon. Like, the assault class was extremely powerful. And so, when I was running around on Conquest, when I was playing Team Deathmatch, it really didn't matter what game mode I was playing on, a large percentage of the population was playing as Assault. And I would say that for the most part, that power discrepancy has has been fixed, or mainly fixed in Battlefield 4. Like, DICE has done a very good job at uh, creating a little bit more power for all of the other classes. Like, the Assault class is still very, very popular in Battlefield 4. It's still got some of the best weapons, it's still got some of the best gadgets, but I would say that DICE has done a good job at trying to close that power gap between all the classes, and I would say that you do see a lot more class diversity in the current game. Uh, but overall, if you cannot tell, I had so much fun going back and playing this game and I highly recommend if you haven't played it in a while go back and give it a try. It may take you a while to get a, a accustomed to the controls, it may take you a while to get accustomed to the maps once again, but trust me, spend like 30 minutes, it's gonna it's gonna be like riding a bike and you're gonna have an absolute blast. Uh, but that's about it for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed this flashback of some Battlefield 3 gameplay, I know I did, uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.